Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. To start off this video, I want to say thank you all. Our channel reached 10,000 subscribers and we're so grateful for all of your support. I'm going to take this video to talk about how tractors and equipment function on a small farm using our small farm as an example. Now, we're not a typical example because I started collecting old farm all tractors which were made by the International Harvester Company about 10 years before we started farming and I love collecting them and restoring them so we have a lot more tractors than we need. I think that fixing up old tractors makes sense for a small farm because it's a limited investment and so you have a quicker payback but I understand it's not for everybody. If you're not mechanically inclined new equipment may be the way to go for you but I'll show you what we've got and you can make up your own mind along with talking about a lot of the fascinating agricultural history behind this equipment. I don't spend much time in a tractor seat. Our small farm is almost all handwork and there's a lot of small farms around us that don't even have a tractor and get along just fine. We use tractors for three main jobs here. The first and overwhelmingly the most common is pulling wagons around, pulling chickens around, pulling firewood around. You know, there's a million jobs that involve pulling a wagon. Number two is we use uh, tractors for making hay and that's basically three months out of the year that we have a specialized line of equipment just for making hay. The third job is moving manure and hay around. These big bales behind me need a tractor to move them to put them in place to feed the cows and we need a loader tractor to clean out the winter bedding packs for the cattle and the pigs. This little tractor gets used every day for pulling wagons, used more than any other tractor that we have by far. It's a 1953 Super C and it's about 20 horsepower. It's really easy to get on and off of because it's low and despite being almost 70 years old, it starts right up every time. One of the cool things about this tractor is it has a two-point hitch that International called a fast hitch and two-point just means there's two connection points here. If I pull these up like this, this drawbar will <laughs> come right off. And then I can hook up other implements using this two-point system. And there's a great story behind this because when this tractor was made, a lot of tractor manufacturers were going to three-point hitches. And there's a fascinating history behind the three-point hitch. In the 1920s, a man named Harry Ferguson that lived in Scotland developed a three-point hitch system. And the idea was that instead of just towing an implement with you know, this point on a drawbar, the three-point hitch had an automatic draft control and this was especially good for plowing because what the draft control did is when you were plowing it adjusted the plow depth based on soil conditions and it made plowing a whole lot easier which is something people did a lot in the 30s. Now when Ferguson patented his system he teamed up with Henry Ford to come out with the first mass-produced three-point hitch tractor and that was the Ford 9N in the 1930s. It took off like wildfire because it made things so much easier. International Harvester was a stick in the mud so later on when other tractor manufacturers including John Deere and Alice Chalmers started leasing the patents to the three-point hitch to put on their own tractors, International held out instead developing their own two-point hitch system, which worked great, but the problem was you could only use International implements with it. So if you had an old three-point plow that you'd had from a previous tractor, you couldn't hook it up to this two-point system. So that was the drawback of it. We don't use a lot of three-point hitch implements on the farm. We have a post hole digger and we have a brush hog that are three-point. Everything else we just use the drawbar for. But the handy thing about this drawbar over our other older tractors is that you can lower it and raise it. So if you have a wagon that doesn't have a tongue jack on it, you can lower it down. See that chicken wagon right there? Lower it down, hook up the wagon, raise it up, and away you go. I bought this tractor from a neighbor for 2500 bucks, and it had to be about 10 years ago. And I bought it with a two bottom fast hitch plow and a sickle bar mower that was also two point hitch. It's been a great tractor. I like it in its working clothes. I haven't restored it, repainted it, but I have gone through and replaced the bearings in the engine. I've rewired it and done miscellaneous little things to keep it running well. It starts every time, as I said, incredibly reliable and very little investment in it.
This is the tractor that gets used next most often on our farm. It's a 1964 Farmall 504. And until about three years ago, it was our biggest tractor and did all the hang work. Since we bought the larger 656, this tractor has been relegated to loader duty. We put a Ford loader on it and we use it to move manure and hay around the farm. A loader is so handy to have on the farm. This tractor is miles ahead of the Super C in terms of what you can do with it. It's got a four-cylinder gas engine, it's about 45 horsepower, and it has live hydraulics and PTO, which means when I pull these hydraulic levers, I can have the clutch depressed and the tractor stopped and the hydraulics still work. Same with the PTO or power takeoff here. This was a big advance because before that, whenever you were uh, working the tractor and you pushed the clutch in, you would lose the availability of all those functions and you had to put the tractor in neutral and let the clutch out for them to work again. Now, continuing my story of the three-point hitch, this is the first American-designed three-point hitch to go on a tractor. So International Harvester held out on buying the patents for the three-point hitch from Ferguson for many years. And what happened in the early 60s is they reverse engineered their own three-point hitch system. So this box here under the seat contains the automatic draft control. And this linkage for the top link feeds into this box and controls implement depth automatically, just like Ferguson's system did, only in a completely different way when you get into the guts of this box. Now this tractor was a complete basset case when I bought it. It barely ran. The wheels in the front pointed two different directions and I had to put a lot of work into it. I bought the tractor for about three grand which was probably too much but I liked the tractor and old tractors aren't always about dollars and cents as far as why you want to buy them. And the engine was clapped out. I had to rebuild the engine. I had to redo the steering system with the help of my dad. It's all new in front as far as tie rods. It's got four new tires on it, which is a big cost for a tractor. Um, I went through all the seals. I went through the hydraulics. So it's a reliable tractor now. It's a little too small for loader duty, I think. I would like to get another 656 and put that on loader duty and relegate this one more to pulling hay rakes and pulling wagons around. Next up is our largest tractor and it's used for baling hay and cutting hay. It is an International 656 made in 1973. It's a diesel tractor and diesels from this era are a little bit different to start than gas engines. You don't just turn the key and push the starter button. For this tractor, you've got to throttle it up, turn the ignition on, and then warm up the glow plugs. The glow plugs are little plugs in each cylinder and they glow red hot and heat the cylinder up enough for diesel combustion to start. So we wait a few seconds to warm up the glow plugs. And there's a little meter here that tells how well they're working. And then we try and start her. thing about this tractor is it was the first large hydrostatic tractor. International developed hydrostatics and built them as the perfect tractor for things like making hay, which is what we use this tractor for. And it works just like a lot of lawnmowers do, except instead of a foot pedal that you push down, it's got this lever on the side. And to go forward, you just push the lever forward. And to go back, you just push the lever back. Really great for a hang to adjust tractor speed to the conditions you're encountering. I bought this tractor at a consignment auction and when I bought it it had serious problems. I knew its provenance. It had spent its life on a sawmill not too far from here powering the sawmill from its power takeoff so I knew the transmission didn't have a lot of wear on it. The gas engine in it was clapped out when I bought it. It had a knock in it. I took it apart and found out that it had a loose valve seat and also the timing gears in the front of the engine were worn and one of them was missing a few teeth. So I rebuilt the gas engine and I had more money into that than I would like to admit. It got the whole nine yards. Um, new sleeves, new pistons, all new bearings through the engine, new valves. I had the head checked and redone. Um, everything and it had a great running gas engine in it but the second year after I bought it I decided that the gas engine used too much fuel it was going through more than a tank a day doing hay so I found a Junker 656 which I'll show you that um, had a good diesel engine in it and I swapped the diesel from that 656 into this engine 
rebuilt the injection pump on the diesel and it runs fine now it just smokes a little bit I'll probably get more life out of it than I'll ever need before it really needs a rebuild in addition to the engine work I did a lot of other things to this tractor I completely rewired it I went through the hydraulic valves and replaced the seals in them so they quit leaking. I've replaced a lot of other seals on the tractor trying to get it to stop leaking. Old tractors are like babies. They tend to leak everywhere and it's hard to catch them and fix them sometimes. This tractor has a certified roll bar on it and a canopy that I built out of wood which I don't especially like the looks of but it gives me some much needed shade when I'm doing hay. This winter I would like to buy a factory reproduction canopy for it and put that on as well as take the tractor apart and paint it and make it look like new again. Regarding that gas engine that I put all the money into, here it sits on a trailer in the barn. I closed up all the openings, poured some oil on the cylinders through the spark plug holes, and it sits here waiting for me to find a Junker 656 to put it in and make into my new loader tractor. Now aside from the tractors we use most here on the farm, we have a whole slew of other ones that I drag out to do this or that with, and I'm going to show them to you quickly. I'd love to spend a lot of time talking about each of them, but that would make for an awful long video. This is a Farmo Cub from the 50s, I believe. I got it really cheap from an owner that wanted it to go to a good home. It had been in his family since it was brand new. Smallest tractor that International made besides its lawn mowers. And I got it with a whole set of implements. Plows, discs, cultivators, sickle bar mower. It was a really nice package. It's set up right now and it needs to be gone through. It's waiting for that here. This is a trusty little tractor that has power that's deceiving for its size. This is a 1947 or 48 Super A. I went all the way through this too. This was a junker when I bought it. Right now it's relegated to snow plow duty in the winter time, but we used to get on it and use it to pull a rake when we were doing hay. The cool thing about this tractor is the engine's offset, so when you're driving it, you can see straight down at what you're doing. It was a super cultivating tractor. You can see right where the cultivators are tracking in relation to the plants that you're cultivating between. This is a 1940 Farm All H. You've seen this at work on the farm too. I went through this completely. Every nut and bolt has been out. The engine's been rebuilt. Transmission's been gone through. I love driving this tractor. They don't make them like this anymore, that's true. And I use it for raking hay and pulling wagons around. It turns on a dime with this tricycle front end. Stuck back here in the corner, we've got a Farm All MD. We used this tractor to farm when I was a kid. It starts on gasoline, but then switches over to diesel. Really unique system. It hasn't run in about 10 years. This is another one that's waiting for some tender, loving care. This is a 1924 McCormick Deering 1020. It's the oldest tractor we have on the farm. I did a video last winter on getting it running that you can look up. Reliable old tractor, but drives like a tank. This is a 1939 Farmall F20, one of the first tractors that revolutionized agriculture with its frame type, its high operator station, its visibility out front, and its tricycle front end so it could turn on a dime while cultivating. I went all the way through this tractor. This was a junkyard special when I bought it. It hadn't run in decades. It was seized up. It's all new now. Engine went all the way through it, every single piece and it runs great. Armstrong special starter system now. bit dangerous and I don't do that every day. One of the great things about this tractor is there's a cable on the front that comes from the steering column and when you turn sharp enough it engages the brake on that side, stops that wheel, the tractor turns on itself. That is awesome to drive. 
So that's our tractor family. Um, I have shown you most, but not all of our tractors. We have a bunch that are sitting in the weeds here and there, either as spare parts for tractors or just awaiting restoration. I want to talk a little bit about buying used tractors. Now, as I've shown you through this video, I buy most of the tractors that I have at auction. And auctions are buyer beware territory. Unless you know the rules of the game for the auction, don't bid. And unless you know about the equipment you're bidding on, don't bid. And you have to have some mechanical knowledge to assess what's being brought up at auction. There's no warranties at auction. You raise your hand at the price that's given and it's yours. There's no giving it back. If you're less mechanically inclined, there are safer ways to buy old equipment. You can buy directly from the owner instead of the third party auction service. And that way you can get to know some history about the equipment and know possibly some of its potential problems. Get a good idea of what the owner used it for. Even further on the, on the sort of safety um, spectrum is buying directly from a dealer. On the back lot of most tractor dealers they'll have old tractors that have been traded in for newer ones and sometimes a dealer will provide a warranty for those tractors after checking them out so that's the safest bet. The problem is you're going to buy or you're going to pay the most money from the dealer because of that insurance they're providing. I view old tractors, as I said, like a part of the family, and sometimes uh, money's trumped by feelings, and that's okay. The world isn't always dictated by what's economically best. It has to make you happy as well. So we do things like make our own hay, even though we're a small farm, because I love making hay, and I view it as a part of farming, and we use old equipment to do that, and it's a great part about our life. We, I don't have to justify that to anybody except for myself. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed my tour. I hope it's given you some idea of what you might need on your small farm. And thanks for joining me, and I will see you next time.